All right, guys, so here's what I got going on. I got uh, a little bit of bad weather in the area, and the um, last couple weeks it's been a little bit too windy to be out there on the kayaks. We've had them having like 15, 20 knots, and and uh, I I just don't, I mean, if I, <laughs> if I had to uh, fish for subsistence, I would probably be out there, but um, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not in that predicament, but what I do want to tell you guys is that uh, I want to keep keep bringing you guys material. So what we're going to do today is um, actually show you guys how to tie some knots. I've been having a lot of questions on how do you tie a knot, how do you tie, what, what kind of knots do you use. And uh, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through a couple of different things. First of all, we're going to talk about the FG knot. So the FG knot is what we use, or what I use, what most people use. Um, to show how to connect a leader line, which is your monofilament, I use either 20 or 30 pound monofilament, to your braided line uh, for, for transition. And why we do that is because it's easier for the fish to see your braided line in the water, and fishermen have found out that monofilament um, is much easier or much harder for the fish to see when it's uh, attached to your lure. So I got, a, I got a couple of different knots that I'm going to show you guys today, but we're going to start off with uh, the FG knot. So the FG knot, let's see if I get this thing to focus right here. Oh, I don't know if you can see that very well, but what we have is that it's called the FG knot. And the FG knot ties that knot, uh, ties a good knot to your leader line so that if you're going to be going through your eyelet um, on your fishing rod, it's not going to get, it has a less chance of getting um, hung up on those. So as you get towards the end of your rod, like you, like this one right here, that's a pretty small eyelet. So if you had a larger knot or a, yeah, a larger knot on there, it would more than likely get caught up on there and then you'd almost be tangled up on your own fishing rod and having a hard time retrieving your line. So what we're going to do is show you guys how to do that and uh, we'll go ahead and Most get... of the time when I'm setting up my uh, leader line, I use Andy's monofilament. Uh, this a, comes in a 50 yard spool. I'm using 20 pound test. I, most of the time I use a 20 pound test. It's uh, 0.45 millimeter diameter. And um, I don't know if this is their intention of doing this the way this is reeled up, but that's how I do it. I always leave a little bit of an extra out like that uh, so that it's easy to grab <laughs> but it probably is but anyway how I do it is I'll pull out about six feet six to seven feet of this uh, once I get it all tied up but until I do I only pull out I'll pull out maybe three or four feet and uh, use that for my tying uh, for my FG knot and uh, what I'll do here is show you guys how to do this FG knot here in a when I'm dealing with my um, braided line uh, and retying myself whether it is that it's the leader lines getting too short or if the um, line breaks off or whatever the case is when I'm doing this is I'll take my rod and I'll stick it in my rod holder and I pull a little bit of tension on it and I give myself about uh, six or seven feet of it and then I'll I'll set I'll set it so that it holds its tension and when it's set in my rod holder that gives me enough tension on the rod to just to be able to tie that knot successfully. So I'm just kind of lay, leaving this on the table right now and I'll pull it up against myself or pull up against it to give it a little bit of tension. So, but when I start it, I, uh, I do that and I give myself, um, so the, the end of the rod is right here in front of me and I'll just give myself about that much room. That gives me the ability to pull more tension or let more tension out if I need to. And then how I do it is I set it up and I give myself about that much. And then I set it up and I tie it up around my pinky. Just wrap it around five or six times so that you have enough tension. So that when you're tying your knot, you can pull tension or release tension so that you have enough uh, resistance to be able to tie that knot successfully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this. Uh, I'm going to change my positioning here so that you can actually see me tying the knot. Uh, first person, but uh, that's how I do it and that's kind of how I hold it. I'm as you can see I'm not holding anything on it It's not tied in a knot. It's just wrapped around my finger and so that it has enough tension and it holds it tight uh, Until I can get my knot tied. So just a second So I got about six inches here 
and I do, I lay it over the top, and then you go under, wrap it around, kind of hold it, and you go under the front, over again, and you just keep going, and you're just going basically kind of like a figure eight formation, and um, you're going to do this about 16 to 20 times, and I'm not really counting here, but it usually ends up being about, I'd say about three quarters of an inch uh, long when you are tying it. And you want to make sure that you keep enough tension on there so that it doesn't wrap up or unspool. Um, you want to keep the same tension on the monofilament line as you do your braided line. You can see we're starting to get, we've got about a little bit less, about three eighths of an inch there. Um, and if, as you're going along with this, you're gonna find that you are kind of walking yourself towards the reel or uh, the end of your rod. And that's because you're, you're uh, creating tension and, and using up some of that line. So as you can see there, it's kind of getting to pretty close to where we want it. And it's kind of wonky right there, but that's okay, I think. So we're going to go ahead and go around one more time and hold it like that. And then you're going to take your extra of your braid and then you're going to just do a half hitch. Okay, so you're going to go around and then kind of hold, make sure that your half hitch goes around your braided line as well as the monofilament line. And then you're going to just pull that knot snug. Pull that knot snug. Make sure it's not over the top of itself uh, for the braided portion. And then do it again. And then we've pretty much got that locked. Pretty much got that locked. So that's not going to come undone. So where we're at right now is we've got our braided knot, or I'm sorry, we've got our knot uh, tied up and we've got our two half hitches right there. So at this point now, what we want to do is we're going to want to wet this. So I always wet it with a little bit of spit. So I'll lick my fingers and just kind of rub it on there like that. And the important part now is, is we're going to set that knot. Okay. So we've got, I'm going to wrap it around my hand two or three times here. Uh, for the mono side and I'm going to wrap this portion of it around the braided side and then we're going to pull and I'm going to hold this close here and you're going to see this knot kind of change okay so we're setting the knot and the the mono is kind of it's really kind of melting as it stretches and it sets that knot and makes it nice and straight I'm going to pull it and this is going to take a lot of tension okay um, so remember how it was kind of a little bit wiggly there before, but it's now it's nice and straight. And as you can see, we've got a good knot going all the way down there. And this is about, oh, I'd say probably about three quarters of an inch. And at this point, we can go ahead and cut our mono line nice and tight, really tight to it. Uh, we want to cut it real close to that knot without grabbing any of the braided wire or a braided line. And we're going to do a couple of more half hitches there to set it. And we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going the same direction that I have been. And do a one half hitch. And another half hitch. I don't know if you guys can tell, but man, this is a lot harder to do with a camera right in front of you. I'm trying to do my best to show you guys. Um, and then set another half hitch. And really, you are pretty much done at this point. Okay. So the reason for this knot like this is the transition to your, from your braided line to your mono line. And this knot will help you now, hold on a second, let me cut this tag portion off. OK, 
Okay, well, that's a little bit long, but this knot helps you keep the narrow profile and allows you to transition from your braid to your monofilament line without having a large knot that's going to get tied up on your eyelets as you're retrieving your line. All right, so I have turned this thing back around here for us so that we can uh, start showing you how much I actually leave here. So I've got my knot, my FG knot, and uh, there's a couple of different names for this, but I like the, uh, <laughs> the one that I like the most is the FG knot. It's called Fighting Giants Knot. Um, <laughs> and the reason for that is, is because it just sounds cool. And, and it, there's another reason for it. You can look it up on the internet and find out what you like, uh, uh, the different names of it are, but just make sure that you've got your line nice and tight around there. If you've got any, um, any, any sections of that braid that are loose, especially up here on the end, you are going to have a couple of casts and that thing's just going to come apart. So, so just make sure that you get it wet before you tie that knot and start really pulling that, pulling that knot tight. Because if you don't, that's going to start unraveling down here on the end and you might have an opportunity to lose a fish there. So, so I always make, what I actually do is I'll just stick it in my mouth real quick and do like that. And, uh, when I pull it, I just pull it nice and snug, snug like that. So, um, now we are at the portion of where we want to cut off our extra and put our leader back into the kayak. So I got about three feet, I'd say probably about two and a half, three. So what I do is I pull out about six feet, seven feet. And the reason for that is because every time you cut off a line or you cut off a lure, you don't want to have to go and retie your FG knot. So um, I cut myself off an extra, I'd say, I'd say a couple extra feet. So I usually go about six or seven feet and then I'll cut that off. And that's about the line, the, uh, the length of my rod. And when I cut that, that gives me the opportunity to tie probably five or six different lures on here before I have to replace my leader line. And as you get used to it, you'll get better with it. Um, you'll get a lot better with it as you uh, do this knot more, more and more. And uh, I would recommend practicing putting this, uh, doing it in the living room while you're watching TV um, so that when you're out there in the wind and you're out there actually live fishing, you're not going to be struggling with this going, oh man, what did Dave say? I can't remember it. You go under here, over here. Oh, oh. So, and then you're just going to be frustrated. So get good at this in your living room, in your garage, in the front yard. Uh, have your favorite beverage and sit there and drink uh, and, and do this not until you get good at it. And uh, that way when you're actually doing fishing and you have to retie an FG knot, that you're not frustrated because you uh, didn't practice enough in your not live condition so um, or your not fishing condition. So um, at this point, what I'm going to do is show you guys how to do a Rapala knot. So the Rapala knot is pretty easy and I'm not going to spin the camera around. I'm just going to move it up here. Um, the Rapala knot is pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to show you guys how to do that uh, with it facing me. Um, and this has just happened to be the jig head that I've got. This is uh, just a regular jig head with a uh, one aught size hook on it. And uh, I think this is a three eighths uh, of an ounce weight on here, but that's not significant. Really all I'm trying to do is show you where I'm tying it to an actual lure. So uh, this is called a Rapala knot. Some people call it a Rapala knot. I call it a Rapala knot. Um, and I believe that Rapala is the correct way to actually say that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my monofilament line, my leader line, and I've got about six to eight inches here uh, that I've got, and I'm going to tie a half hitch knot. So you're just going to let it naturally loop around itself, and then you're going to go through one time, and this is just like, like you would do if you were tying your shoe. So uh, I'm going to go through it one time, and as you can see there, I've got one little knot, and uh, it's loose. You don't want to tie that tight. So just leave it loose like that and then kind of pull it, pull it a little bit small. So it's about, I don't know about the diameter of a pen or a pencil. Um, so if you can see that, that's not really big right there. Um, so we're going to take that and then we're going to take the eye of the jig or whatever lure it is that you're using and you're going to put it through there and just kind of hold that in one hand. Okay. So I like to hold it in my left hand as I'm doing it. And that, as you can see, is just one loop with the line coming through 
the eye of the jig. So you're going to hold it like so, and you're going to take that tag portion and just go straight through that loop again. So it's going to look just like that. Okay. All right, so you're gonna take that and kind of pull it down towards the end of it, but you're not going to make that tight at this time. So you're just gonna hold on to it. I like to pinch it with my finger, and I usually only go around two or three times, and I have not had this come undone at all. So, so we're gonna go around once, twice, and we'll do three times just for good measure. Okay, and then we're gonna kind of hold on to the back end of that and then go right through, right back through, but we're not gonna pull that tight yet. So now we've gone back through the half hitch, and then we're going to go hold on to that extra portion here and go through there, go through that portion again, okay? And just like any other knot, you're gonna to wanna to get it wet. So I get it wet a little bit, and I'm going to take it and pull it tight. Okay, now one thing you're going to notice is this thing starts getting a little bit crazy and it looks like it's going to bundle up on you, but what it's actually doing is just tying down on itself and getting nice and snug. So as you can see, that knot got tight and it didn't, it didn't get tight around the eyelet of that jig and it's like that for a purpose. Okay, so when you're pulling this thing through the water, let me finish snugging this thing down real quick. And I like to pull mine, once I get it nice and snug, I'll pull it at the top side. And I like to push it down a little bit with my finger and that holds, that pushes those uh, little wraps a little bit tighter. And get yourself a nice good snug knot. And then when I clip it, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it happens to me, or used to happen to me a lot. So I will leave just maybe an eighth of an inch extra because as those knots start to pull tight when you got fish hooked up that knot will roll a little bit and I have had knots come undone because I didn't leave just a little bit of tag line there. So what I've got is a good Rapala knot and that Rapala knot has an extra portion here for the the jig to be able to move around naturally and I use a lot of Texas eye jigs but if if you tie a knot that goes right down to the edge of your jig, it's not gonna have a good free motion to it. So I, this is probably my favorite knot to tie. And this knot uh, gives that uh, fish as you've got, if you've got your plastics on here, but uh, you can do like four or six inches plastics, and that thing will roll, that thing will go through, go through the water much more naturally, and it's not having the line pull on it to pull it in, in tight rigid conditions or uh, positions. So as you're uh, casting, this knot will kind of roll around on itself. And from time to time, it kind of gets, it, it'll, get, uh, it'll get tied up on itself, but it usually doesn't. And then you just retrieve and reset it, kind of untangle it a little bit and let it cast it out. And as you can see, this thing just, this thing just uh, goes wherever it wants to. It's not resistant to the line. So if you're like holding it and you want that line to, to sit like this, you can do a different knot and hold it tight so that when it's in the water, it's sitting like this. But as you can see, this is going to sit in the water just like so and have a better chance of your action being natural going across your retrieve as if instead of having a tight knot where you've got this thing either being set, setting up like this going across on the water or sideways through the water. It's just a better knot to allow your jig or your lure or whatever you've got hooked up to, to be natural in the water when it's going through. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed what you saw today. Um, I give you a couple of different knots that I tie. I showed you about the FG knot and then how to do a Rapala knot. The Rapala knot is for your jig and to the leader and the FG knot is for the braided line to your leader transition. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And like I said, I apologize for not being out there on the water, but sometimes you gotta be inside to show some of the techniques that we do. Um, but if you like what you saw today, go ahead and smash that like button. And then there in the bottom right hand corner, go ahead and hit that subscribe. I promise you there'll be more stuff coming out. Again, my name is Dave with Inshore Kayak Fishing from Savannah. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.